so this is um, the last feeding to before we mix into dough. So my this is my starter. This is how it looks. Um, it's kind of hard to see. Okay, this is better. So it is very bubbly, and it's bubbly at the top. But you can see that it had collapsed from top to bottom, and that is okay because we're not mixing in, in the dough yet. And so, um, you know, I didn't want to wake up too early. I went, <clears throat> I went on a run, so I didn't want to have to deal with it before that. And so, so if it collapsed before we, um, we, we mix in, in, in the dough, the feeding before, then that's fine. But now we, this is the feeding that matters. This is the, this is the last feeding. So it matters. So after we feed it, we have to watch it carefully. We cannot let it collapse because when it does, then it's not. It won't have enough strength to lift the dough. So, um, so it looks like the the starter is very active. And you want. I normally don't feed it that many times after I take it out of the fridge. Um, usually, if your if your starter is in the fridge for about a week, you can feed it a couple of times and you can start using it. But if your starter is in the fridge for more than a, a week, then I would suggest that you feed it more than two times. So that's why I did three times this feeding in our bake along because I just want I don't know where your starter is. So I just want to make sure that it is um, completely active and so that you will have the most chance of success. So this is our last feeding. So, um, well, you can't see the scale, but um, so the recipe requires 180 grams of starter. So we should at least put in 60 grams um, of starter because we're doing one, 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 one part starter, one part flour, and one part water, right? So we're going to at least do 60. If you do a little more than 60, that's fine. So we could we can use that to feed again. So let me turn that on. So add in 60 grams of starter, 60 grams of flour, and 60 grams of water. Give it a good mix and make sure that there are no dry spots. At the end, this fed starter should be thick. So be sure to watch this starter to determine its peak. So it's time to feed our, I mean, not to feed, to mix our dough. So this morning I fed the starter at eight and now is three. So I have, there, it's been seven hours, okay? So, so this morning I fed it and I marked it right here. This was the top. This has had more than double and it has a lot of bubbles and there are bubbles at the top too and it hadn't deflated yet. Um, so that is a good sign. There's a lot of bubbles and a lot of activity. So this is at the perfect time. I could wait a little longer, but I don't want to take any chances because then it might collapse on me. Okay, so so let's let's test it out. So um, how do you know your starter is ready? I made a post on that. One is that it's bubbly on the side. It's bubbly at the top. It rose more than double. Okay, so, so it met all those tests. Now the last test is... Um, the float test to see if this will float, if my starter will float in the water. So, um, take a small spoon. I'm taking a small spoon of it, and then I'm gonna drop it in the water. Let me put it here so you can see it. So, as you can see, it is floating right is at the top and not at the bottom so my starter is actually ready so that's how you know your starter is ready i don't actually have to do this test all the time i can just tell i mean after a while after a while you um, know your starter you will know that it is um it is ready okay so so i will mix that in now so this was um this was 150 no 100 180 grams of flour of starter I mean sorry 180 grams of starter I'm gonna use it all see how thick it is this is exact consistency that we want it's like a really wet dough so put it in 
put all of it. I'm not saving any because I saved this morning. There are a little bit of starter left that I can use to keep in the fridge for further baking. So since I measured this out just for this recipe, I don't have to save any. Normally you should save some so that you could start another, um, another recipe on another starter. Okay, so that is the, that is starter. And then you wanna add 475 grams of all-purpose flour. That's what I measured out here, 475 grams. And then you want um, about 10 grams of salt. Okay, there it is. And then you want, I'll just use the same water, 300 grams or milliliter, they're the same milliliter and grams of water. Three hundred Okay, there you go. I'm two grams over, but that's okay. Um so I normally mix it oh you, I don't know why dirty and other things. You can use a spatula or whatever you want to use to mix it. Sometimes I use a wooden spoon. So keep mixing this dough with your rubber spatula. It may seem a little dry because there are a lot of flour, but don't add any more flour. Keep mixing. There are a lot of water within the dough, so keep mixing it. Eventually, it will come together. If you prefer, you can use your hand to mix it. It will be faster. Okay. So see, it's very wet. It's stuck all to all my fingers. I'm going to just scrape down my hands, and this is it. That's all you have to do. Then you cover it with a lid. I have a lid, and it looks, you know, it looks like this, shaggy like this. This is perfect. No dry spots. Okay, and then you let it sit for 13 to 18 hours or 14 depending on, I'm going to let this one sit um, for four, 17 hours, I'm believing, because I, I mean, I'm not going to wake up in the middle of the night and make bread, so I'm going to um, let it sit on, on the counter all the way until the next morning, um, until I wake up the next morning, tomorrow morning, okay? Cover, perfect. Hi, so today is bake day. Um, day that we're going to bake the bread. So now I'm going to take the bread out for a second um, to shape and then second proof. So I'm going to dust the counter lightly with flour. And then this is, I only made half a recipe because I'm, I'm going to give the bread away and sometimes the bread is too big for certain families. Um, so this is what, what it looks like. Um, it's actually really bubbly. If you can see it. It's already popping out so then um, I'm gonna gently take it out I'm gonna dust my hands with flour gently take it out just lightly go under Okay, so now you take it out. There's a flat piece of bread, of dough, so you can fall in the side. Try not, so this is where you want to be gentle. You, there's a lot of air bubbles, so you don't want to pop them, right? And so you want to gather just the sides. Yeah, I'm going to show you. Turn it around and then pinch it. 
pinch it on the bottom to make a circular ball. Be gentle with it. So this dough, I'm, I'm experimenting with two kinds of hydration. This is the reduced hydration one. I figure lower hydration will help you have better success. So I reduced it for you, but then, it, but then um, all the recipes out there are really at 67% hydration. So that gives you better holes. So now I'm done. So I'm gonna put your proofing vessel. I use a plate because this is half a recipe and then use parchment paper. If you have a whole recipe, you, you should use a uh, frying pan or something. So I picked it up, gently put it down. So now you wanna watch the dough so that it can, it can rise, but no more than double. A little under double is even better, okay? So, look, so I assess how big the dough rise by putting my hand on it right now is like one of my palm. My palm is small, but if it, so if it, if I see it higher or I see it grow bigger than what my palm is, then, then you know it's growing, right? So, okay, so I'm gonna put this, I'm gonna put a saran wrap over it, and this is done. And you just wait to see it grows, and then you, um, so usually it'll take a, a, between an hour and a half to three hours, depending on the temperature. So by after one hour, I will start preheating the oven. Hi, so right, so it's the right time to bake now. So it has, um, second proof has gone on for about two hours now and a little bit, I wanna say. Yeah, about two hours. Um, so this is the dough that I originally proofed. I originally put in. Remember, I put my um, hand over it and my hand was just, um, it was just under my palm. It was, it was smaller than my palm. Now it is bigger, right? You can see that it is bigger. See, if I move my palm to the end edge of the, the dough, you can see it rise quite a bit. So now it's time to score and bake. I like to score just crisscross. There it goes. So then I'm gonna put it in the oven. If you listen closely enough at a, a bread that just came out of the oven, you can hear the crackling sound. Okay, so these breads are ready. Listen to the sound. This is the sound that makes me want to make bread over and over and over again. So this one is the regular, the hydration um, 60%. This is 67%. Um, they, uh, they look exactly the same. Um, they rise exactly the same because I have the same rise time and everything. So we'll just have to see what it looks like when we cut into it.